The best kind of doors are the doors you have to explain. Welcome, welcome to Unhinged. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Vinny. Okay, final photo. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's zoomed out a little bit here. I see a few things right off the bat, like the tripping hazard taped across the floor and looks like there's some obstacles here as well. But what is that to get out? Is that a card swipe or is that a, a pin code on that? It is or a card. Either. It's a card swipe. It's a hospitality lock. I think it's a Kava or something. Oh yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's an easy 10 right off the bat then. That's terrible. If it's no longer being used as an egress door, then that, you know, it should be identified as such here if there's another one, but that's still there. And that is still probably on their fire escape plan and everything. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because behind this was kind of like a kitchen access to the emergency exit. I get why you would want to put a reader on there to restrict like guest access there, but you can't do that on the no. path. Like you said, it's an automatic tent, right? Like that's a, that's a no-no. Yeah, it's a shame too, because it looks level. <laughs> nice looking door, but yeah, that's um, it has to be a tent there. I mean, that's an automatic life safety fail. Now, was this where you were just at? Was this something you said? Oh my gosh. I'm honored to get one of the GSX ones here. This was that accelerize this was denver again oh okay i see i see i almost put one up from gsx but i knew this <laughs> still on the docket and we needed to talk about it so gotcha yeah i don't like anything about this either and i'm sure that was a temporary setup with whatever's plugged in over there and taped down they did their best to make it not a tripping hazard but everything I mean, about this is cringeworthy they had breakfast there every morning for the hotel like mm -hmm. and maybe 150 people could sit in this area. So this should actually have an exit device on it. Like if you think yeah. about it with the load of that area, this needs to be an out swinging door with an exit device on it. But no, let's just restrict their access instead. <laughs> I even used my credentials to see like, oh, maybe I'm authorized to survive today, but no, I wasn't. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. So it looks like there might have been renovations behind where the exit sign is, or uh, is it, does, it just the lighting? It almost looks like they put a fresh paint of coat there. There is like a little... A paint of coat, huh? <laughs> yeah, but maybe they... Um... Like re-drywalled or something, yeah. which then was there a different exit sign there? Should they have been modifying their egress plans? and taken that sign down. I don't know how new that hotel was, but this is a newer sign, right? Green wasn't widely used until recently. That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's a newer version of the sign. I mean, the door has seen some wear and tear. So the door is probably original with the build, but yeah, they probably redid something up there and like, oh, let's continue to have this exit sign up there. <laughs> and not that it would even excuse it, but I mean, there's nothing even there directing someone to, you know, an actual egress door for them. So there's just nothing. They're going to get there and the door is going to be locked. If it wasn't a life safety fail, I would cut them some slack for the plethora of hot sauce options they have for their breakfast bar. <laughs> I was um, noticing that but too. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, inexcusable. Now I do, when you notice stuff like this, do you ever bring it to anyone's attention there and let them know? Or is, it, yeah. is this, as a mad this one, the other two, I could see, you know, not really saying anything possibly, but this is bad. Yeah, this is the one that I called into the fire marshal office. They had me fill out a report to send to oh. the state or something like that. So hopefully next time I go to Denver, and stay at this hotel or go near this hotel, they've resolved these issues. But I sent this and another photo in with the report, tattletelling on them. There's a lot of better ways to kind of monitor the kitchen than to put a card reader on it, especially if that is supposed to be an egress door. I'm glad you called that in though, because who knows how long it's been you know, set up like that. <laughs> and through COVID, a lot of people have like put their fire inspections on the back burner and people aren't holding them accountable like they used to. <laughs> and that's the shame. We have to hold the whole in industry to a higher accountability because there's fire marshals that do show up and let stuff like this slide, which is mm -hmm. unfortunate. I was told once that people in the door hardware industry make the worst AHJs because there's <laughs> about all the little details. But in reality, it's integrity. You either have it or you don't. It's very black and white. It's either it passes or it fails. And if it fails, you got to take care of it. Like in my book, it, you have to. I mean, that whole thing should change anyway. It's right on the kitchen. So, you know, there's a good chance that's where that fire is starting. Yeah. And that's their <laughs> path of egress is going through the kitchen. Now, I would hope most people, you know, if they went up and, you know, they touched the handle or felt heat coming off it, they'd be like, hey, let's not go this way. But again, you know, the sprinkler goes off, fire alarm goes off. I mean, you're sitting right in there. That's the direction you you're going to go and you could potentially be running right into the fire. So that has to be, even if not for the card reader there, it's just a bad plan. Yeah. I mean, there is code set up to where the path of egress can't go through like a hazardous environment, but I don't know if the kitchen is considered that, right? Because a lot of mm -hmm. restaurants have their emergency yeah. egress. 
at the back for their staff to get out. Maybe there needs to be some people to rewrite that because you're right. Like that's probably where the fire is going to start. Yeah. I mean, that or the toaster is right on the table there. Yeah, I guess. There's opportunity for fires to start. <laughs> I'm glad you saved the worst to last. That's definitely 100% unequivocally a 10. I'm with you. I'm giving it a 10. Yeah, 10. No, I and do have we... a question for you guys. Now, have you, either of you, installed a strike before? Yes. Yeah. You have. Well, okay. <laughs> because I went to one of the trainings <laughs> with Judd, actually, and they, this was kind of early on when I was at Eastern Security, and they had showed us, you know, how to cut in strikes. It was kind of just a refresher course going over a bunch of different products, a bunch of the HES line, and they used the the Dremel Ultra Saw is the one that they showed us. They you know, made the larger cuts with that and then the smaller Dremel with a smaller cutting wheel on that for the finer cuts. And at the time, I didn't have a lot of tools. I had just started out. So I was borrowing a lot of tools from other technicians. What I ended up going with, I had the multi-tool already. I bought a DeWalt 60 volt angle grinder. And that is typically what I use to make the larger cuts on it. And I get knocked for it all the time. But you know, when it's an HES one, I have all the templates right there. I pop those up. I stencil around there. I get the, the painter's tape around that to kind of keep everything contained. And I typically with a standard strike, like a, you know, a 1500, I can cut it in pretty quickly. But I was curious if you guys had installed them before, what tools you typically recommend for cutting in strikes. If you go with the multi-tool, the jigsaw, the angle grinder, the Dremels. For me, I've only installed a handful. I'm, I'll be the first to admit I'm not a technician by any means. And it was in kind of instructor-led environments, yeah. what you were at. I've seen people use angle grinders before and it can do the job. But also like if you don't do it well, and the blade's not sharp like it's that's when you tend to see some of the more hack jobs out yes. there if that makes any sense i've seen the dremel and the multi two are, are like the go-to yes yeah but, i mean so. efficient with it and you do a clean job like i don't see like there's anything wrong with it like no and that's the thing with the angle grinder especially to you know the dewalt one that i got which most of my tools are milwaukee that's like the one dewalt one i use regularly other than the vacuum because it's got that flex volt battery so it's compatible with the 60 volts which is you know a ton of power for an angle grinder but it's very easy to control they've got like a, a good braking mechanism on it it's got you know the handle on it like a lot of them do there and you know i can't think of any time where i've overcut anything and you got to be conservative with it and kind of know what it's starting to get away from you and stop then and i was curious you know what you're going to show me for doors because i had saw one that you did where it was a strike and there's cuts all over the door and it's obvious they were from a multi-tool you know you got that turn all the way up and that thing skips when it skips especially if it's a you know an, an older blade on it the, the blades are expensive on them as well too it's you know you know, yeah. you get a multi-pack of them. Sometimes it's, you know, 30 to 50 bucks there, depending on the brand. And you really can't do it with a dull one. And you find you have to replace them a lot. The angle grinder, I get a, like a 10 pack of cutting wheels for not that much. And if it's even slightly dull, I just toss it right out and grab a different one and it's ready to go. I just stumbled upon something there. I think I know which strike you're talking about. And it literally looked like a murder scene because it had <laughs> red paint behind it. Do you remember that one, Mia? Yes, <laughs> I do. So bad. Yeah, no, that, that's one of those things that everyone I've seen do them uh, install them a little differently and everyone's got their tool of choice. I'm always interested to know what other door hardware nerds use for it. I would say like the templates are key. Like do you have yes. the metal magnetic templates? Like those things like make a world of difference. They really do. Cause even like if you get the paper template up there and you get it positioned just right and you tape it down, even then there's give with it. The metal ones, you just like throw yeah. it up there, make sure it's all lined, mark it out. Like you're good to go. I don't have the magnetic ones. The ones I have just kind of screw right into place. You take the yeah. face plate out and you pop those right in there and it's kind of, it's adjustable based on the model and I've got one for I think every different common HES strike and it just kind of screws right in like a regular face plate would and you kind of stencil around that but I'll have to look into the magnetic ones that's if you're screw convenient if you're screwing into the face plate then you're going to be aligned every single time right as long yeah. as everything else matches up so yeah those templates sound good yeah I've got my main box and my door tools bag and then I keep another one in the truck as an emergency one in case I forget them one day or if I lose them because they're invaluable they cut the time down so much. I wish I had them for some of the other ones. I do a lot of the 7400s and that would be great to have a template for. I've done enough of them. It's easy enough to do at this point, but I were the first couple. I kind of guessed on it a little bit because it didn't come with any kind of paper template or anything. So I was like, all right, well, and you know, you cut off a little bit. Like a barber, you can always take more off. But yeah, the first couple, I remember really fighting with them. Pretty sure they make like a magnetic template for the 7400. I'm going to make a note and okay. let's, we can send you out one. I'm sure the oh, awesome. product manager would love to have you. <laughs> I really love that HES video that you did showing the inside of it. I yeah. Know. 
<laughs> and I'm finding a lot of the stuff like that actually is kind of taking off on TikTok. And again, we're still kind of in beta on that. I was told you know, to run with it and see how it does. But yeah, a lot of people are you know interested in seeing how that kind of stuff works. A lot of times you walk by it and you know before you guys were in this industry, probably never, same for me anyway, I never gave it a second thought. You know, if I scan the card and the door unlocks, it did its job. But to see, you know, the internal mechanism of it, it it's fascinating. By the time this airs, I've already done this video, but I'm actually going to do one for a mag lock. Oh. But to demonstrate how it works, I'm going to put a tool up on the magnet <laughs> And I'm going to press the Rex button and the tool is going to come down. I'm going to have my buddy down below with a hard hat on. It's going to you know, give him the old clunk. It's Unfortunately, it's tough to demonstrate with a mag lock. You know, you can't really see it as much. It's going to be a good one, though. Okay. Well, thank you, Vinny, so much for joining us on Unhinged. I really appreciate your time. Our doors are always open on Unhinged. Join us for the next episode. Let me try that again. Let's. <laughs> I was like, how's he going to pull it back? <laughs> Vinny, thank you for your insight. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you hopping on Unhinged with us today. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me, guys. I have an open door here as well. And in case so, any emergencies, feel free to reach out for anything you might need. Bye right there. Join us on the next episode of Unhinged. Like Vinny's door, our door is always open because it's Unhinged. If you want to be featured on a future episode of Unhinged, or if you have a picture to submit, you can email me at mia at doorhardwarenerds.com. Thanks for watching.